Nerd Reactor, roll out. What's up, Reactor? It's John here, and it's time to talk about Avengers Endgame. So I'm going to go in-depth, and I'm just going to talk about just the things I like, the characters, the uh, the story, and so this is kind of like a uh, recap and also things that affected me, and uh, maybe talk about the timeline and maybe some issues I had with the timeline, but yeah, overall, Avengers Endgame. This was an emotional roller coaster ride, and it brings back this is like a completely different film from Infinity War. Infinity War was about Thanos trying to get all the stones, and uh, you know this is his uh, adventure where he finally wins. The bad guy wins, and so what's gonna happen when he wipes off half the population of the universe? And so with Endgame, we get to see that with the characters and how they're affected. So here, like the first, the very first act, it's them trying to figure out, all right, let's try to get, let's try to get the stones from Thanos, go to where he's at and end it. Thor kills Thanos like that easily. So I'm thinking, okay, that was easy. I guess the movie's done. But nope, now they still have to figure out like afterwards, how are they going to bring the people back? And so the movie takes place five years later and the Avengers, they're still trying to figure out what to do. They're just trying to uh, figure out a way to move on. But they can't because they still, they're the Avengers. And you see in this world five years later, it's kind of sad. It's gloomy. Uh, you know, Captain America is part of a support group. And it's kind of cool. Like he's paying respects to how, uh, you know, Sam uh, Falcon had a support group before and so now we see it here and Black Widow is still trying to update or help people come up with updates on what's happening in the world the universe maybe there's a clue out there and uh, she's also trying to find out what happened to Hawkeye because in the beginning of the movie Hawkeye's family you know they disappear they all turn into ash so you know then they figured out you know what what if you can take the stones or go back in time. And so that idea only comes about with Ant-Man. And Ant-Man was able to go five years into the future after the events of Ant-Man and the Wasp. And so they try to get Tony to uh, come up with a way to finally pinpoint how to do time travel. Uh, so so that's where we have Endgame now. Where the crew figure out a way to time travel they go back in time they try to get all of the different stones so that they can finally bring the people back the uh that you know just bring back the people that were disappearing from when thanos did the snap uh but yeah the thing with time travel so in this movie they said that it's not the same way that back to the future has done it or terminator or uh hot tub time machine and so it's it's a very uh this is like this avengers timeline is different where if you were to change something from the past it creates a new timeline so it won't affect the uh the original timeline so this movie will have many different parallels and many different parallel timelines and so that means you can just do whatever you want you can make changes and all that and it won't affect the other one it will just uh, create uh, a new adventure but yeah, so with the Avengers going back in time, it creates a lot of fun adventures and how would you do things differently? It creates a lot of closure and it affords the writers to write moments for these survivors and just to give us more of an impact once the finale hits. And so we'll talk about Iron Man. So Iron Man, five years in the future, he has a kid, he has a daughter, he's with Pepper Potts and the Avengers are trying to convince him to you know come up with time travel especially with the quantum realm and he was hesitant at first but he finally decides you know what i'm going to do this i don't want to have regrets and so his adventure his journey like we've been seeing iron man from very the very first iron man movie and then to iron man 2 iron man 3 avengers and then avengers infinity war this movie and then he was also in homecoming and captain america civil war um, so here, a part of his journey, he figures out time travel, Iron Man, along with the other Avengers, they go back in time and for his role, they were going to go back to the first Avengers movie 
where they get the uh, the Tesseract and they defeat Loki. And so this moment was fun where it's all about the aftermath of Avengers and how they're going to try to get the Tesseract because uh, they need to get all the stones so they can uh, do the snap again. So yeah, uh, since Tony Stark failed his mission, he's going to have to time travel to another time period that has the Tesseract while also having the Pym Particles because they need to have the Pym Particles to uh, do everything. And so it was a moment where he gets to meet his dad, a younger version of his dad in the uh, 70s. And I thought this was a very great moment to show that, you know, this is closure for Tony Stark and his dad because he always... There's like a like kind of love and hate relationship, and uh, even in Civil War, like he didn't even mention his dad. He just talked about his mom when he's talking about how Winter Soldier killed the parents. His parents, and he's like, I don't care. He killed my mom. Like he didn't even mention about I don't care. He killed my mom and dad. So here, like we find out that Howard Stark, Tony's dad, really does care, and that he'll do anything. And I was like, man, that's. That is touching. That is so touching where we finally get to see that. And Tony hugs <laughs> Tony hugs his dad. So yeah, I'm going to get this out of the way. Iron Man does die at the end of the film. Uh, his scene, he finally gets the upper hand on Thanos because he gets Infinity Stones. And you thought that Thanos has it. But he tricked them. And he says, I am Iron Man. And he does the snap. And Thanos and his army turns to Ash. They disappear. And But because of that, the movie set up before that Thanos got injured by doing a snap. The first time he did the snap, you already saw like his arm getting messed up. And then the second time he does the snap, the second time he does the snap is to destroy the stones because he was like, you know what? Since I've killed off half the population of the universe, there's no more point to the stones. I'm going to get rid of them. And so he does another snap and like half, half his body has been disfigured and uh, it takes a heavy toll. And this is Thanos we're talking about. He has superhuman strength. He's a tough guy. So Iron Man, he's human. And doing that, uh, it takes a really heavy toll on him and he dies because his body can't handle that. And that was that was a touching moment. That was probably the saddest scene from the whole movie. And there were plenty of sad scenes. And I was when I was watching this, uh, my first time, I was I was like trying hard to hold in my ugly cry. There's like, I got two versions of tearing up. I got the regular tears where they just tear up. And then the one where I'm mm -hmm. <laughs> kind of like Tobey Maguire and Spider-Man. I think Spider-Man part three or two, where he did the ugly cry when Mary Jane broke up with him. <laughs> and so like, I was trying to prevent that. And I was, my mouth was shaking. So I've never felt that much of a heartbreak just because we've grown with Iron Man since the very first Iron Man movie. And we've seen, yeah, we've seen him through all the films. We Robert Downey Jr. is super likable. He's cocky, but he's also charming. And it's just a, a combination of that. It's, it's just sweet and uh, entertaining. And you uh, you like the guy. He's a likable character. And uh, he's, and you also know that he cares about people, even though he can be selfish. But we've seen that he would sacrifice himself, similar to Captain America, for the greater good. We've seen that in Avengers where he takes a nuke and flies up into space. And here he sacrificed his life to stop Thanos and his army from winning. It's an emotional scene where I love the way they did it because he uh, he didn't have like a lot of dying words. Uh, pretty much he just he does a snap and he gets hurt and he's just lying down and I think like just he's got few words and it's just saying pepper and then after that he just dies and passes away and the moment where you got war machine showing up just caring for him and then also spider-man and then also uh pepper pots with her outfit because she comes to help it was it was an emotional scene it was i thought it was really well done probably like the most it's going to be the most talked about scene just or just the most talked about moment. And people's going to be sad. Uh, especially with during the end credits. Iron Man. There's like the end credits with the names of the actors. And so the six Avengers. From the first Avengers movie. They get like their very special moment. And their signature. And the last one was Iron Man. And for the uh, second screening that I saw last night. 
uh, people were cheering. They were like cheering loud because this is Iron Man. They were also cheering for Captain America, but Iron Man, this is it. This is his journey is over. And so I'm like, I was really sad about that. And then we have Captain America. So what's Captain America doing? Like he didn't have a, he was a main character in Infinity War, but other characters had more of the limelight. Such with Iron Man, Spider Man, Peter Quill, Gamora, and of course Thanos. Uh, Captain America was there, but he's kind of there to just help fight and just show that he's a badass. But here we get to see him uh, just leading the Avengers, figuring out what to do, uh, figuring out how to move on, especially five years in the future. He has his, uh, the support group. And then he's also get, trying to get the team together so that they can do their mission, their time traveling mission to help save the universe. Through the time travel, the time heist, we get to see Cap go in the past during the uh, the Manhattan Avengers battle. And there was like a really funny, two of my favorite scenes in that was, actually there's plenty of favorite scenes. But first, uh, since he went with Tony Stark, that means they went right at the end of the battle, the aftermath. And they're trying to get the Tesseract. And right now, Hydra has the Tesseract, but back then they didn't know it was Hydra yet because it's still shield and so he's in the elevator with all the different hydra people which you recognize in the winter soldier and you're oh my god this is this is just like the winter soldier what's gonna happen is he gonna beat them up just like in that movie but captain america goes into one of the characters and whispers hell hydra and i was like oh shit he did it and he comes out with the suitcase and uh the suitcase has the uh the scepter so you're like wow Wow, that is very, very fun, funny moment where you would never think of Captain America saying Hell Hydra, but he does it in a way so that he can accomplish the mission. And then the next scene, he confronts his younger self, young Captain America, and there's a part where like they're fighting each other, and then he he uh, beats down Cap, young Cap, and Cap's like saying, "I can do this all day," and Cap's like, "Yeah, I know," and I was like, "Oh, that's that's so funny." People laughed at that scene, and. The other scene was where uh, they made a comment or Iron Man made a comment about Captain America's ass. Like that suit did his ass no favors. Uh, but then once Captain America defeats young Captain America, young Captain America is like out on the ground with his ass sticking out. And he's just checking. He's checking out his own ass. And he's like, yeah, yeah, that is America's ass. Just because Ant-Man was like uh, supporting his ass from the previous comment. And but yeah, Cap. Cap's been on a long journey, especially from, uh, you know, Captain America: First Avengers, and that moment at the end of Captain America: First Avengers where he wanted to continue the date with Peggy Carter, but that couldn't happen because he sacrificed himself to save uh, the world from Red Skull, and yeah, so he never got that chance because he was suspended in ice, uh, you know. Uh, so he couldn't do anything and he wakes up in the future but here uh, in Endgame he gets bits and pieces he goes back with Tony Stark to try to get the Tesseract again after they failed with uh, Loki because Loki grabs the Tesseract and disappears so yeah once Captain America joins up with Iron Man to go back into time to the 70s to visit one of the shield places to get the uh, Tesseract and the Pym Particles uh, so he gets a moment where he sees Peggy Carter. This is a 1970s Peggy Carter. And, you know, after seeing all the movies, knowing how much he cares about Peggy Carter, especially with his uh, the photo that he always has where he carries it around everywhere he goes, you're like, oh, crap, what's going to happen? He's going to say hi. But you know that he can't try to, he can't make changes. So it's going to be sad. Uh, that moment pays off later where, I'm just going to talk about it now. The ending where he's supposed to deliver uh, all the stones and place them back to where they were. He decides to stay in the past with Peggy Carter. And I thought that was really sweet because there was a moment in Endgame where Black Widow and <laughs> Steve Rogers were talking about getting a life. And so Steve Rogers finally gets to have that life that he always wanted with Peggy Carter. And for as a Captain America fan, I'm like happy to see that. Just finally. You know, he gets to have that dance. That dance, oh, the music too, 
It was such bittersweet ending. The uh, the another crowd, the biggest crowd pleaser for uh, the uh, Captain America story was where he's fighting. Uh, we finally get to see the final battle with Thanos with the three main Avengers. You got Thor, you got Iron Man, you got Captain America. And we didn't get to see them team up in Infinity War. So to finally see them come together, you're like, yes, this is going to be like the most exciting thing ever. And so they're they're tag teaming Thanos. And then Thanos, he's formidable. So he's able to like just beat the crap out of them. And just when you thought, uh, you know, Thanos was about to kill Thor. The hammer lifts up and goes towards Captain America. So Captain America holds on to the hammer. So you're like, yes, finally. Because we've seen glimpses of the uh, worthiness of Captain America in Age of Ultron. Where when he's trying to lift the hammer, uh, it kind of shakes. And then you see you see Thor like looking shocked like, oh no. <laughs> but here, Thor was like, yes, I knew it. And it was such a great moment where... Captain America is worthy. He's fighting Thanos with the hammer. Just seeing that fight one on one. Oh my god. That was like, that was just a, a joy to watch. And Captain America's arc, very fitting. And uh, I think uh, any Captain America fan would be happy about his journey, finally having a happy ending. Especially he's got the winning ring. So it's hinting at the fact that Peggy Carter and Captain America, they got married. And I do want to talk about the time traveling thing where, you know, they're trying to like not do a lot of time travel manipulation or messing with the timeline. But the movie sets it up where if you change the past, it just becomes a whole different thing, a different parallel timeline. So that means he can have this alternate timeline world where he's with Peggy Carter and they live a, you know, they live happily ever after. But the movie does set up that, you know, if you change it, it's not, it's, it's going to be a parallel timeline alternate timelines and but he shows up in the that same timeline where he disappeared into so i'm just confused because if they took that away where he shows up somewhere else i'll be okay with it because okay this is a proper alternate timeline but he's here with sam with the uh remaining surviving avengers or uh, you know they're all back anyway but the ones that are there and so it's just ooh, timeline can get messy uh, but I know why they Russos did that. Just to, it's like fan service to see Sam finally get to see Cap happy, and Cap giving Sam the uh, the shield. So just pretty much saying you're gonna be the new Captain America, and you, you know, you're gonna do uh, a good job. And uh, Thor, man, Thor. This was like a biggest uh, secret from the Marvel films with the trailers. We, we've seen Thor here and there, but we never really got to see. Uh, the look of Thor being defeated because after he kills Thanos, what's going to happen? And it didn't bring back the people. So when Rocket Raccoon and the Hulk tries to meet up with Thor, he's he's living in New Asgard, but he is a mess. He's got a beer belly, and he's he's got that gaming life. And his his buddies from Thor Ragnarok, they're there. They're playing they're playing Fortnite. Uh, I guess it's still a thing in the future, and. He uh, he just feels hopeless now, and now that he's uh, back, he still has that look. He's still got the beer belly. He's got that uh, big Lebowski outfit, <laughs> and so he does have some closure with his mom because in Thor, Thor: Dark World is considered like probably one of the worst MCU films. It's personally not my favorite, and uh, but I do like the fact that you know he finally gets to talk to his mom. And I just felt like when his mom died, I, I didn't feel that heavy weight when I was watching that movie. But here, like you, you feel sad because, you know, he couldn't change it if he wanted to. Especially if it's going to create like a different timeline. Uh, but he decides that he's going to leave with the Reality Stone because he's there to get the Reality Stone with the help of Rocket Raccoon. And so uh, he doesn't, uh, uh, with his arc... It's just him fighting, and then later on he gets to fight Thanos. Uh, but re he really got his adventure in the third, or Infinity War, where he uh, finds Stormbreaker. Yeah, it's just it's just fun to watch Chris Hemsworth as Thor, just having fun with this character, having fun with this new version with the big beer belly, and uh, it's just he's he's funny. And then in the end of Endgame, 
uh, you know, he he talks to Valkyrie and he t- uh, you know he tells her, you know, you're a great leader, so you might as well be the new ruler of Asgard, new Asgard. And so it's like passing the baton to her, kind of like Captain America passing the baton to Sam. And now what's going to happen to Thor? And so here we see Thor, t- uh, you know, teaming up with the Guardians of the Galaxy. So he calls it the Asgardians of the Galaxy. And I thought it was great. So what's going to happen? I, I want to see him in future. Hopefully this does set up him in the uh, films, the Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. If they do do that, I would want James Gunn to name the movie as Guardians of the Galaxy. That would be great. Uh, and it would be just like a fun adventure of uh, Thunder God with Peter Quill and the gang. Especially, you know, he's like a, a space pirate. So then we have Black Widow and Hawkeye. So these characters, they've been like great buddies because we've seen them in First Avengers where they they fight each other. And then we also see them in Age of Ultron. And then, uh, and then you know, we see him here where it's like they have this fun banter they also have this fun little game where they do like to fight each other because the first time they fought it was uh, hawkeye was under the influence from loki and then here the reason why they fight each other in endgame is completely different because they're both trying to sacrifice their lives to save people and i thought it was great because hawkeye feels like he's he's a changed man he's a murderer he's killing so he doesn't deserve it and he rather sacrifices his life so that uh, Black Widow can live and then Black Widow's like you know what I'm trying to save your life so they are actually fighting each other to see who's going to sacrifice themselves because they're trying to jump at the end of the cliff in Vormir to get the soul stone and because the soul stone you need to sacrifice a life or, or a soul for a soul and in the end Black Widow makes the ultimate sacrifice and kills herself so that Hawkeye can get the stone and then they can bring all the stones together and that was that was the uh after the death of iron man black widow's death that was like the other big tear jerker moment and i was i was like wow i really i like scarlett johansson as black widow and she's been a likable character and to see her do that it's, it means a lot and it it's it's touching it's like it's heartbreaking too Especially with Hawkeye, because Hawkeye cares about her, and uh, the way when he when he talks to Thor, because Thor is like, "Oh, we we got the uh, Infinity Gauntlet, you know, we got all the stones back, because they do the mission to get the stones back. Why don't we just bring her back?" And Hawkeye's like, so pissed off. You're like, "Wow!" He's like, "I've never seen Hawkeye that pissed before. Like, just so angry," and it was sad because he cares so much about her, and. This movie, this movie is something. This is like, we usually see this like with series, like series where you're able to build upon episode to episode to episode so you can really care about the characters. But here with these movies spanning with what, I think 22 Marvel films, uh, you grow to love these characters and just what they go through and you feel sad about them because they're always fighting, they're always doing the right thing, protecting us. And we're just here, just, you know, living our day-to-day lives. And it's uh, it's like a sacrifice that they have to do to protect the world and protect the universe. And it gets me. Like, I like I like these characters. Uh, they've grown on me. And in Endgame, there's so many moments where it's just... Everything is... The slightest moment just makes me tear up. Especially with Ant-Man when he times travel... And he's five years in the future. Things are different. So he wants to see his family. He wants to see his daughter. His daughter is older now. And like when they were looking at each other, I was like, oh God, she hasn't seen him for five years. But for to him, it's like maybe a few seconds. And so that was like really touching. And there's just so many great moments with this film where it's, it's just going to bring people together. And people are so... Uh, anti-spoilers on social media so they're like i'm gonna avoid social media until i watch the movie and yeah because there's a lot of moments where you're surprised like marvel marvel studios has kept a lot of things a secret especially with the way thor looks and uh time heist and all that and i i applaud kevin feige and the russo brothers and the cast from avengers and also jim starlin the co-creator of thanos and infinity gauntlet just for creating this world and of course stan lee too and 
it's these movies are like event films and i can't wait for the next phase hopefully they can pull this off it's going to be tough it's going to be tough especially because we've grown like captain america iron man thor both likable funny moments and hopefully they can do that with the next phase of characters where you get to enjoy them um but it's going to be a tough act to follow and now i want to talk about the stuff that cheering of the crowd like i went to two different screenings and the first one was the press screening so people cheered uh during the uh captain marvel scene at the end of the battle where she comes and destroys Thanos' ship and then the regular screening it's uh she comes and uh, destroys the ship but no one cheered so i was like huh this is interesting there's like a big disconnect between uh, the regular theater going public and the uh, the press screening and uh, of course this is like a small sample size because it's just one because I only went to like two different theaters so let me know what your uh, experiences are on your screen on what people cheered at because I want to talk about the things that people cheered about the most the biggest cheer was Captain America alone by himself and then Sam was like on your left and then Black Panther shows up and then the portal comes out and everyone uh, that you know, you know, like with uh, Wasp, Guardians of the Galaxy, they all show up. And I was like, man, this is a very touching moment. And it's great to see all of them together. And then Captain America finally saying, Avengers, assemble. Because he's tried to say that in Age of Ultron, but they cut it out uh, just to tease us. But here he says it and then everyone comes together. It was like the greatest moment in cinematic history. It's like the comic books come to life but yeah there are so many things to talk about in avengers endgame i can go on and on but i'm gonna cut it short uh for this uh but overall enjoyable highly recommended i teared up throughout the whole movie uh i i loved all the characters uh they're all great and they all have like their moment to shine and their moment of their arc that's closing and it's, it's this is a fitting movie uh uh, and it, it wraps everything up nicely for uh, for the next generation, but also closing the story for Captain America, Iron Man, and Thor. Uh, well, Thor as the as Guardian uh, hero, but now he's going to be something else. He's going to team up with Guardians of the Galaxy, and so there's a lot of a lot of crazy stuff happening, especially with Loki. He has a Tesseract. He's, he's going to disappear. So that means he's going to have his own show on Disney+. Plus. And then you have what's left of uh, Bucky and Sam. They're going to have their own show on Disney+. Plus. And so it's going to be like without Captain America. What are they going to do without Captain America? So that should be interesting to see. And then you also have WandaVision. WandaVision is coming out for Disney+. Plus. Wanda's back. How is she going to have a show with Vision when Vision didn't come back? Because remember, in the movie Endgame, the first snap was uh, Hulk to bring everyone back. The second snap was to uh, get rid of Thanos and his army. So uh, the Vision wasn't part of the snapping. The Vision actually was killed by Thanos by taking out the thing. And then some people were like, wait a minute, if Thanos is killed, that means he never really gets to kill the other people. And then all this other stuff doesn't happen. But it's uh, the Avengers sets up a different rules for their timeline where it's like an alternate timeline not and it's not going to affect uh our timeline but so yeah so vision is not going to be back so how is he going to be in wandavision maybe wakanda you know gets his remaining body and figures out a way to bring him back to life i do want to talk about scarlet witch like she does get her moment where she really does a number with thanos because she was like you took everything away from me and if thanos didn't have a ship Scarlet Witch probably could have killed him. I was like, "Wow, that's nuts!" And just seeing her so pissed off, I was like, "You!" I was like cheering her on, like, "Yeah, you you take down Thanos just because of the stuff he's done." Uh, so yeah, those are like my thoughts. Uh, you know, it's a bit long. It's uh, recapping and just talking about what I liked. Uh, let me know what you thought about the movie. Your favorite stuff on the comments below. And what parts? I want to know like which part did you cry? Did you cry at all? Uh, did you cry with Iron Man or? Uh, black widow or even you know uh scott lang seeing his daughter or any moments with iron man and all that let me know in the comments below with that said i'm john and i'll see you guys next time